Okay, so we're going to fly through the respiratory anatomy, and then we'll spend a little bit of time on the physiology. Simply, the respiratory system is responsible for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen is required by all the cells in the body in order to function. So the respiratory system brings in oxygen and gets rid of the carbon dioxide. That's the whole purpose of the respiratory system. Uh, now on here, I gave you a little pathway. Air passes through a series of tubes and passageways before it reach, reaches its destination. So when air enters, it enters through the nose or mouth, then through the pharynx, which we commonly call the throat, the larynx, which is the voice box, the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, and the alveoli. Gas exchange only occurs at the alveoli. Nothing else takes part in gas exchange. All right, so let's start with the nose. You have one, it's in the middle of your face. Brings air in from the outside, right? It's basically um, a little bit of bone, mostly cartilage and covered with skin. Everybody knows your, your nasal bone is only about this big. It's only like this big, right? The rest is cartilage covered with skin. Lined with a mucous membrane, and covered with hairs and sticky mucus. What's the purpose of the hairs and the sticky mucus? Filter, catch the dust and the particles, exactly, so that we don't breathe those into our lungs. The mucous membranes also warm the air and moisten the air. All right, the pharynx is what we commonly call the throat. The pharynx is part of both the digestive and the respiratory system. And the pharynx is divided into three separate regions. And if you look at this picture, the pharynx basically ex extends from the back of the nasal cavity all the way down to the top of the voice box. So this whole area right in here is the pharynx. The part that sits just posterior to the nasal cavity is the nasopharynx. The part that sits posterior to the oral cavity is the oropharynx. And the part that sits just above the larynx or the voice box is the laryngopharynx. So when you look in your patient's throat and you shine a little light in there and, you know, you see the little uvula, the little hanging down thing, what part of the pharynx are you seeing? Oropharynx. So let's go through to the voice box or the larynx. The larynx has three functions. The larynx helps to produce sound. It prevents food and foreign substances from entering the airways, and it's also a passageway for air during breathing. All right, so it does three separate things. It's mostly cartilage, but it also has some smooth muscle and some ligaments attached to it. And it contains something called the epiglottis. What's the epiglottis? It's a cartilage flap, very good. It's a, it's a cartilage flap that looks like a toilet seat cover. It's exactly what it looks like. And it flaps down and covers the larynx. Why is it covering the larynx? To keep food and foreign substances from entering the lungs. So the epiglottis is very important. If you look at this picture here, this little piece right here is the epiglottis. We'll talk about this when we get to digestion, but when we swallow, our larynx moves up and forward, and the epiglottis flaps down to cover the larynx so that food and liquids or whatever we're taking into our mouth don't go down into our airways. The larynx also contains our vocal cords. And the vocal cords are basically folds of tissue, um, muscles, and ligaments. And there's two types of vocal cords. We have true vocal cords and false vocal cords. True vocal cords make sound. When air passes over the true vocal cords, it produces sound. The false vocal cords are not involved in making sound. They just kind of anchor and attach the true vocal cords. So the harder you push air past your vocal cords, the louder the sound is going to be. And then that sound will resonate in your nasal cavity and in the sinuses, in the holes in your, the bones in your face and your forehead. Okay? So what happens when you have a sinus infection and your nasal cavity is completely stuffed up and your sinuses are full of fluid? Not that you can't hear it, but the sound is going to be different, right? Your voice is going to sound different because the sound waves are not resonating. This is a picture looking down somebody's throat with a camera, and what you see here is the true vocal cords. This here would be the epiglottis, but it's, it's being held open so that the camera can see down the person's throat. 
the hole or this space between the vocal cords is called the glottis. So the glottis is the space between the vocal cords, and I have that on your handout as well. So the epiglottis, epi means what? Above or upon. The epiglottis covers the glottis. The glottis is the opening between the vocal cords. All right, so we've gone in through the mouth and the nose, past the pharynx, down into the larynx. Below the larynx is the trachea, and the trachea is what we commonly call the windpipe. And the trachea extends from the larynx down into the thoracic cavity and into two main parts. So the trachea would be here, and then it splits at this place called the carina. If you are suctioning a patient and you pass a suction catheter down into their trachea and you touch this carina, you don't have to touch it with much force, just touch it, the patient's going to cough. Even if the patient is unconscious and on a ventilator, they're going to cough. It's a reflex, just like your gag reflex. Why would the, why would the body have a cough reflex right there? To protect itself, exactly. To cough out anything that touches that carina because that's just one step away from each lung, right? So the body has two protective mechanisms. One is the gag reflex way up here. The other is the cough reflex at the carina. So the carina is simply that area where the trachea splits into right and left. All right, so the, the trachea is held open by rings of cartilage. If you go back to this picture, can you see the rings back here? Those are rings of cartilage, and that keeps the trachea open. Uh, an open airway, we say, is patent. So we, we like patent airways. The airway needs to be open and patent. So the trachea splits, like I said, into a right main stem and a left main stem bronchus. Plural is bronchi. Your book refers to them as primary bronchi. In practice, we use the term main stem. It means the same thing. And it, it's just like a tree. The, there's a picture in your book of an upside down tree in the lungs. You have the big tree trunk, which branches into two smaller branches. Those branches, those two primary branches, branch into smaller secondary branches, which branch into smaller tertiary branches. So the branches get more numerous and smaller as they go into each lung. The the larger branches, up until you get to the, the third or fourth divisions, contain cartilage to keep those airways open. Once they get down into the very small little passageways, like even smaller than these, then the cartilage disappears. And these tiny little tree limbs, if you will, the tiny little twigs, those are wrapped with smooth muscle. So if you, if you look at the tree, everybody look at a tree. Look at a tree out there, right? The main stem bronchi would be like the tree trunk. And then the, there's a couple of bigger branches, right? Those are, are secondary bronchi. And then each of those branches has a lot more littler branches. Those are like the tertiary bronchi. And then each of those tinier little branches have little like buds and leaves and things like that. Those are like the bronchioles. And the bronchioles are the tiniest little airways. So the, the airways keep branching into smaller and smaller and smaller airways, like an upside down tree. So we've done the trachea, we've done the right and left main stem bronchi, bronchi, primary, secondary, tertiary bronchi, ends in the bronchioles. All right, bronchioles are wrapped in smooth muscle, no cartilage. And at the end of the bronchioles, there are clusters of air sacs that look like this. They look like clusters of grapes. And those air sacs are the alveoli. And each one is called an alveolus. And surrounding every single alveolus is a pulmonary capillary bed. So there's blood vessels that surround each and every little tiny air sac. And there's millions of these alveoli in each lung. Millions. There's about three million in each lung. The alveoli is where the gas exchange occurs. There's lots of them. They have lots of surface area. They are very thin-walled, simple squamous epithelium. One layer of thin, flat cells. Why does it need one layer of thin, flat cells? Easy diffusion. Very good. So stuff can move by rapid diffusion. And this is exactly where we want rapid diffusion to occur. So there's lots of them. There's a lot of surface area. They have very thin walls. And each one is surrounded by a blood supply. So gas exchange only takes place in the alveoli. We'll talk a little bit more about gas exchange, but everything else is just basically a tube or a passageway to get you there. So all of these bronchioles, these, the, the bronchi, the primary, secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, this all is 
contained within the lung. Obviously, you have two lungs, one on the right, one on the left. The one on the left has two lobes. The one on the right has three lobes. Um, if you look at this picture, this is a right lung. Um, it kind of looks like a cobblestone kind of pattern. That's basically um, just clusters of tissue. This is a normal lung. The black stuff up here is probably just um, dried blood from, you know, it's probably an autopsy photo. So that's not a smoker's lung. That's a nice, healthy looking pink lung. Um, the upper part of the lung up here is the apex. Down here is the base. Remember, apex doesn't mean top. Apex means the pointy part. And the flatter, broader portion is the base. So when you're listening to somebody's lungs and you're listening at the bases, you're listening down here. When you're listening to the apices or the apex of the lungs, you're listening up here.